there was a period in my life where I decided that I wasn't going to work for a nine to five anymore. I just couldn't do it. And there had to be another way. I had to think outside of the box. There had to be something else I could do because I wanted to be committed to my creative work. So I started looking on Craigslist and I started working gigs on Craigslist so I could devote all of my energy and all of my attention to my creative endeavors. And one of the most interesting, awesome, and eye-opening experiences for me that I received from my Craigslist job search was I was a virtual reality assistant. Yes, you heard it right. I was a virtual reality assistant. So what does that mean exactly? Well, we've all heard of virtual reality, right? It's the idea where you put the goggles on and you see a different world. You see a whole new experience within those glasses, within that lens, right? And so my role was to help pass the glasses to the people, make sure they were clean and, and, and explain everything to the person so before they put on these virtual reality glasses, they would know what was going on. And, you know, people would be so funny if you observe them. They would be cowering from a dragon that they would see, or they would be screaming from a scene from Jurassic Park that they would see, or they would be crouching really low because rocks were falling everywhere. And everyone outside waiting to get in line to be the next person to put the goggles on would just be looking at them like, what are they, what are they doing? What, what is it that they're looking at? And it taught me something really interesting about life, right? Everything isn't what it seems. Everything isn't what it seems. And you see life in the way that you want to see it. You create your own reality. As humans, we have this amazing ability to feel really, really passionate about something and love something with our whole hearts or feel a lot of rage and anger towards something and hate something with our whole selves, all of our energy. And that's what makes us interesting beings. That's what makes us interesting people. That's what makes us interesting people. It makes us interesting as creatures, as beings is ability to feel this range of emotions. It can be what tortures us or it can be what makes us feel total elation inside all these emotions. And these emotions have to do with your own reality and what you tell yourself about who you are every single day. And your reality is connected to energy Energy is what's all around us. It's in everything that we do, everything that we see, everything that we touch. It's all about energy. For a long time, I was an energy sponge. I used to absorb everything, any old kind of energy that was around me, I would absorb it. I would absorb it and I would accept it as my own reality. I would take on other people's problems, other people's struggles, other people's pain, and I would carry it with me as my own reality. I wasn't seeing life through the way I wanted to see it. I wasn't seeing life through my own lens. I was seeing life through other people's perceptions, and I was accepting that as my own. The way that we walk through life, the way that we handle things as people, the things that we experience all have to do with our perception of reality, which goggles we're putting on, which glasses we're putting on today, what kind of environment we want to see around us. It all has to do with energy and how we feel right here about ourselves. I had to learn that I didn't need to absorb any old kind of energy. I didn't need to suck in everything that people were feeling around me. That was their reality. And I had to learn to separate 
I had to learn to readjust. And that could be very challenging, right? I was depressed for a long period of time in my life because I spent a lot of time accepting, allowing. Whatever energy we accept into our lives, we ingest it, essentially. It becomes part of who we are. It can affect our mood, our emotions, our relationships. It's all about perception. Energy is currency. And you have to decide with your energy who you want to spend that energy on. What kinds of activities you want to spend that energy on. Where do you want to deposit that energy in your life? The way you do anything is the way that you do everything. So the way that you accept energy in your life, the way that you speak about yourself, the way that you see yourself, well, that has to do with how you see your life. So how do we begin to change our perception? How do we begin to shift our energy? so that we can better see life the way that we want to see it. Well, it all starts with how you speak to yourself. The things that you say to yourself and you accept about yourself every single day, the stories that you tell yourself about who you are every single day, it matters. It really matters because that Acceptance, that story that you tell yourself every day, that's your reality that you're creating for yourself. So choose wisely. Speak intentionally. Use your energy carefully. Because it all matters and it all connects to the life that you're going to leave, live and lead. There's this movie which I love, and it's very popular, called Mean Girls. And in this movie, Mean Girls, there is a popular girl played by Rachel McAdams. Her name is Regina. And Regina is the most popular girl in school. She's well known. And in the film, the character Katie has just started her first day at a new high school. And Katie, she is played by Lindsay Lohan. She actually has never been to a real school before. This is her first day in a high school. She's been homeschooled her entire life. And she was living in a, con in a country in Africa for the majority of her life. And she just moved back to the States. So today in the film is her first day experiencing what a real high school is like. And these three girls approach her, Regina and her two minions or two other sidekicks approach Katie and they're curious about her. They're curious about the fact that she's never been to a real high school. And they invite her over after school to Regina's house. And Katie's all excited. She's like, ooh, these are my first real high school friends. This is my first time experience. What it's really like, the reality of a high school, I'm excited. So she goes to the house, and one of the first things the girls do after they take their backpacks off and their jackets is they all gravitate right away to the mirror. And they look at themselves in the mirror, and they each take turns talking negatively about themselves. They pick out and pull apart parts of themselves that they really don't like. They talk about them being fat. They talk about them not liking their hair. They talk about their skin being bad. All sorts of things. And Katie is just sitting on the side watching this. And when they've all said there are negative things about themselves in the mirror, they turn to her and they look at her as if to say, girl, it's your turn. What you got to say? And she jumps up and she looks in the mirror and she says, Oh, well, well I, I have bad breath in the morning. And as the film progresses, you start to see Katie's character change. 
And she goes from being this nice girl who loves math and really enjoys the friends that she meets that are creatives and art students in, in her grade to this mean girl who everyone knows in school, who's super popular because she hangs out with Regina and her two sidekicks. Her reality changes and her perception of herself changes. She goes from someone who is comfortable with who she is to someone who talks badly about herself. But that's just what she does. That's part of fitting in. That's part of the culture. And what she discovers in the film is she loses out on a lot of her friends that were there for her from the beginning. She lets down her math team because it's not cool enough, so she kind of forgets about it. And she figures out at a point in the movie that she's gone in the wrong path. And this isn't the reality that she wants. So she starts to shift, shift her mindset, shift her perception. And she discovers that she can be who she really is but it's about her being okay with it, her accepting it for herself, not letting other people define what's acceptable, what's popular. And in the end, she feels joy in being who she is. And that's where the joy of creating your own reality comes from. It comes from seeing the world the way that you want to see it. And it all starts with how you talk to yourself about who you are, what energies you start to accept, what people you surround yourself with, what environment you create for yourself. All of that matters. You know, when I first came out, it was to myself. You know, I was in high school, I was a senior, and I had this dream. And in the dream, I realized who I really was, and I was freaked out because I thought, oh my God, I'm gay. And it's like, you know, as you're growing up, you have little inklings of who you are, but you don't want to admit it to yourself. But this was the first time in my life where I couldn't deny it. And I realized how the pieces of the puzzle were aligning to better understand who I was. But because I felt so much shame around it, and because I was so terrified, I started to suppress it, suppress it. And it was really hard and lonely for me because I was miserable because I wasn't able to share my authentic self with people. I was trying to alter my reality because I wanted to have people see me the way that they thought I should be and not the way that I really was. And that's painful. It led to me being really depressed and suicidal. And when I finally got to college, I started to feel that I was far enough from my high school friends and I was far enough from my family that I could recreate a life for myself. I could recreate who I was. I could recreate a reality for myself and I could change the lens. I could change the goggles that I was wearing. I could see my own reality the way I wanted to see it. So I started little by little sharing with people who I was and how I felt and opening up but in doing that you know what the interesting thing was i was still living in a life of guilt in telling people who i was and, and coming out to people i was still looking for their approval i was still looking for them to tell me that what i was doing was okay i was still looking for people to tell me that my reality was okay and when people tell you that your reality is okay, all of that is based on your, their reality, the perception that they have of themselves. People can only understand you to the extent that they understand themselves. And that's no way to live when you're trying to seek approval from other people, when you're trying to apologize for who you are so that people will accept you. You're creating a life based on what other people see and not what you truly are. And that was a big wake up call for me. 
I realized that I was doing the same thing. I was living the same pattern. Yeah, I had accepted my gayness, but I was still looking for other people to tell me that it was okay. And the truth is, when you create your own reality, you know that you are okay. You're more than okay, you're amazing. And you accept that for yourself. And that's the most important thing. That's how we begin to shift our reality. That's how we begin to see the world the way that we want to see it. It's just like putting on those virtual reality glasses, right? People can only see the reality that's in front of them, that they've created for themselves. You can only see the reality that you've created for yourself. When I was begging for people's approval of who I was, it's like somebody being online behind me when I have the virtual reality glasses on and I'm jumping up or I'm swimming with the manatees and the dolphins and I'm asking them, hey, you see what I'm doing? This is cool, right? You see what I'm doing, right? And they can't see anything because all they see is me hopping up and down with my glasses on in a room. People can only see the reality that they have created for themselves. And they can only appreciate you through that lens. So you need to create your own life through your own lens and start defining what life looks like for you. And it all starts with the way you talk to yourself every day, what we accept about ourselves. When we start to change our reality, that's when joy can come in and shine. So think about the way you're talking to yourself. Think about the reality that you're creating for yourself. Are you waking up in the morning and saying, damn it, oh, I only have $20 in my account. Oh, terrible. Or are you saying, you know what's great? I have money in my account this morning. When I woke up, I have money in my account and there's more where that came from and I'm gonna work at getting more. Somehow it's all going to work out for me. Because either of those things can be your reality, right? But you tell yourself, damn, I have to go to this job. My life sucks. Or do you tell yourself, this is a stepping stone for me. There's certain things, you know, that I'm learning more about myself from this job, about where I want to go, the direction I want to go in. It's all about the way that you talk to yourself, the way that you see yourself in that mirror. That's your reality. Everything isn't what it seems. You know, if you're around certain people, they can make you feel drained of your energy. They can make you feel like, you know what, life does suck. Yeah, man. But there can be other people you surround yourself with that can be like, you are doing the big things, honey. You're taking leaps, you're taking bounds, you're taking jumps. Things are going to work out for you. It's all about energy, what you tell yourself, how you see yourself. You can create your own reality because you can be aware of how you speak to yourself, your own energy as currency and where you spend it and who you spend it with. And you can create the environment where you know you will be able to thrive. Remember, it all starts with accepting yourself. That's where the joy comes from. That's where your perception comes from, self-acceptance. Speak the truths that you want into the universe and create the reality that you know you deserve. But first, believe in yourself enough to know that you deserve it. That's where the joy comes from. That's when you will shine. Today, I'm challenging myself to be aware of the lenses that I'm using to navigate through my own reality. What are the things that I'm saying today? What are the ways I'm interacting with people? How am I choosing to spend my time today? Because all of that will determine my reality. Am I stepping outside of my house feeling positive or am I allowing myself to feel negative and small? 
Am I embracing the fact that it's a new day and I have a new opportunity at life? Or am I talking about things that already happened that I don't have any control over and I'm letting those things affect my energy? Ask yourself, what lens am I seeing through today? What is my reality today? How am I going to create my awesome, stellar, amazing reality today? What words am I going to say to myself? How do I want to feel in this reality? How am I going to be my authentic self in this reality? Everything is not what it seems. You create the life that you want to see. You create your own reality. That's where the power is. Embrace it and accept it for yourself. Thank you so much. This is my 10th speech uh, in my 25 Days of Joy Challenge, where every day I'm talking about a topic in joy. If this video resonated with you, please leave me a comment. Please leave me a love, a like. Please share it with your community. All of that helps me to know that you're listening. Thank you so much for listening. Enjoy your day. I appreciate you. Have a beautiful day.